Hi, this is David Raffoff again. I'm here talking about my uh, Ruby Gosu tutorial series. Um, it's basically building um, just a simple 2D game using the Ruby language and a little library called Gosu. Um, so uh, just to give you an idea of um, what this is going to look like, where we're heading, I'm just going to load this up real quick. So here we've got our game with our uh, character that can move around and uh, <coughs> you'll notice as I'm moving I'll lose hearts if I hit either the green or red boxes and the white ones uh, give me hearts and then if I uh, hit the stairs I'll just go ahead and advance to the next level so kind of a nice little simple uh, uh, 2D game kind of uh, based around uh, a game called Ernesto uh, but it's kind of just a typical, I don't know, Zelda-like kind of setup. So anyway, that's kind of the direction we're heading. Um, if you haven't seen the previous videos in the series, uh, I recommend starting at the beginning. Uh, basically, um, going to be test driving changes uh, to any any changes that we make or features that we add as we go. Um, Today is going to be a little unusual. Um, probably not going to actually do any real um, coding on the project or adding features, but um, I wanted to, um, uh, on this project in uh, my, uh, under my GitHub account, <coughs> you'll notice there's really nothing here, it's just the files. So typically for uh, like a uh, project that you're working on, you'll want to include some things in addition to that. Uh, you'll notice if we hop over to like Rails, for example, um, you know, they, the, the files for Rails are up here and you can explore all that, but um, typically you'll also include a, a README um, to explain what the project's about. And um, in addition to that, there's kind of a few other things that you might consider adding uh, to a project. So one of these is code status, um, and this is basically a report just showing that um, if your tests are currently passing or not, if your build's currently building. Um, so um, I wanted to add that to this project. I don't have that in there right now. You'll, you'll notice here even that uh, GitHub suggesting adding a readme. Um, so I think we're going to add a readme and try to get a uh, code status badge in here. Um, another good thing to think about is your license, but I'm not actually too worried about that right now unless I start getting um, requests about that. I'm probably going to hold off on uh, making a decision about that because it's kind of a, um, its own set of problems to think about. So uh, anyway, I, I've signed up with um, CodeShip um, for a continuous integration. Um, <laughs> I've also used CodeClimate a lot. Um, and I actually have had pretty good success with, uh, or sorry, not CodeClimate, um, CircleCI. Uh, I've had pretty good experience with them, but I was just kind of curious to check out um, the setup over here at um, CodeShip. So I, I created an account with them, and um, I don't actually know how to use them to install a badge, so I'm just going to be walking through the process here. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and connect with uh, GitHub here. It's going to give me a list of my repositories. And let's grab the Gosu tutorial. Okay. So um, here it's giving me the steps for configuring my project. It says, uh, please pick your technology and framework. We will pre-populate some basic commands. If you, wish, uh, if you choose a specific tech stack, uh, you can modify these commands at any time. So um, I'm OK with using their defaults. So I'm just going to grab Ruby. So we're, we're just using Ruby, not Ruby on Rails or sorry, not Rails, we're using the Ruby part of Ruby on Rails. Um, <coughs> setup commands. Um, okay, so this is just um, telling, giving us a version of Ruby to use, telling us to um, install Bundler, which we could do. I think we already have it. Um, okay, so it's suggesting trying bundle exec rate to see if that'll run our test. Um, I'm going to go back to our master branch here, see what this does for us. 
Okay, so it's saying rake is not part of the bundle. Add it to the gem file. Okay. All right, so I'm gonna open up the project files over here. We have a gem file over here. So I'm gonna add a rake. I'm gonna bundle. So you can see here rake is now um, being included. Uh, <coughs> One thing you can do too is you can look at your lock file. Um, so the gem file is the dependencies, the gems that you want to depend on. And then um, those might depend on other things. So the gem file.lock is going to go out and um, actually bundler basically is going to go look for the right versions of the things that you depend on and uh, try to find a um, combination of those that is going to, uh, going to work. So this is just the end result of that. And so when we're running this code, um, we know exactly which versions of everything we're gonna be using when we run it. So now that we have rake, let's go back and try to uh, do bundle exec rake. No rake file found. Okay, so rake is looking for a configuration file. Um, that doesn't exist. Okay, so I'm not actually sure what it wants me to do here. Um, I'm just gonna move on for now. Let's see if we can do bundle exec RSpec. I was kind of hoping we'd be able to do that instead of relying on rake anyway. Yeah, okay, so that's actually what we want. We could probably get rid of rake from our um, <coughs> from our rake file or from our uh, gem file. Um, let me do that real quick. Okay, and if we looked at our gem, gem file lock again, we should see that uh, rake is not even in there and there's no results for that. So we're good. Um, so I'm just gonna close that. And I think maybe here, I'll change this to use this command. I think that's what this is asking me to do. Not, not entirely sure. So let's do save and go to dashboard. All right. So it's saying congratulations, push your repo to trigger your first build. Now that you set up your test, please push to your repo. Uh, then your first build will run on CodeChip. So that's kind of interesting. Um, and other Tools I've used for this, you actually have to put something into your files, but um, looks like looks like we're okay. Let me check. Uh, looks like I can't use any of this stuff yet. It's interesting. All right, well, let's see what we have. So yeah, it looks like we got a gem that was bumped. I'm just gonna go ahead and commit that. Probably, it doesn't really matter, but um, I just wanna have something to push up to see this build. Um, so I'm just gonna call this gem bump. I'll call it gem bump uh, to trigger code ship build. Okay. And I'll just go ahead and push that. And let's see if something happens in uh, code chip. So here we go. Looks like it's running. Um, see if we can click into that to get some more info.
So it's given us a little status report here. Uh, this is pretty common, so it's it's basically getting the latest code um, on, on their machines, they're getting the latest code, checking up um, uh, the latest uh, branch, I guess, or latest commit. Um, doing some caching, setting up a virtual machine. Oh, and I see they're on 2.2.0. 2 what is it? It's blowing up on uninitialized constant board spray. Okay, so the order that the files are loaded in can be different on various operating systems. This can lead to problems where constants are used, but the class it is loaded from is not available. Make sure to require all necessarily files in the right order. All right, so it looks like it's trying to it's trying to use a file that hasn't been loaded yet. Um, so it's looking for board sprite, and uh, it, it's it's having trouble finding it. So um, yeah, it looks like we've got some stuff to straighten out here if we want to do this. Um, I'm kind of curious if this is a common problem on CodeShip. Um, let's take a look. Initialize constant. Okay, not find anything really quickly there. Uh, so let's see. Yeah, so it looks like here um, Hart is attempting to reference board sprite. Um, For some reason, oh, I see, because it's uh, depends on board sprite. So yeah, there's just a problem with the way that the uh, things are getting initialized. Um, it's kind of curious though. So that doesn't happen for me locally. So maybe it's something specific to their setup. Uh, so I'm gonna just follow their suggestion to go back and look at the uh, test commands. So one difference we have is I'm not actually using RVM. I'm using a different tool for managing rubies called RBENB, and I'm actually a little further ahead than where they are. I'm on 2.2.2. So there's a difference. This looks OK. It's wiped out my setup. Hmm. Okay. I'm just going to try running this one more time. See if it fails again. Okay, so in our spec helper, we first load all the files from our lib folder, and then we load all our files, spec files, and then we require our spec. 
and down here we require all files from under lib, all Ruby files from under lib. So that should get everything before we actually run any specs. Um, okay, well it looks like uh, I'm just having trouble with code chip, so um, I'm probably gonna have to pause this and do something about that. Okay, so I figured out um, what was going on there with the code chip um, builds not working. Uh, it turns out I was lucking out locally with files being loaded in the order that I needed them to load. Um, so what was going on, I can show you here, is um, on these two files, uh, these two classes, board item and board map, um, inherit from board sprite. And in those files, I was including the board sprite. I was requiring the board sprite class so that it was available to inherit from within this class. Uh, but you can see down here on the heart class that inherits from board sprite, um, I, w I wasn't including the board sprite uh, class, so it wasn't available. Um, so I was looking out locally that it was just um, for some reason working. Uh, actually, not entirely sure why, um, but it was kind of kind of nice that uh, you know using CodeShip helped catch that error. Um, so that's kind of one one thing that's nice too about um, continuous integration is you're just going to catch some things that you may not catch locally uh, if they're running in like a different environment. Um, although ideally, your uh, test environment and local environment are as close to uh, close together as possible and as close to whatever your uh, production environment is going to be. But uh, but anyway, so this was a pretty simple change I had to make. Um, you notice too, I just went ahead and used um, requires on uh, on these first two classes here. Um, I didn't really need to, to use the require relative. Um, so anyway, that should be uh, all straightened out. And uh, <coughs> I made some other small commits. If you look through the project history, you'll um, probably notice those, but basically cleaned up some other RSpec um, conventions here and got rid of some things that RSpec 3 um, is just going to handle for us by default um, about the load paths. So anyway, I basically made a branch for that and pushed it up to CodeShip. And uh, the first time I went through it built, uh, built in like 16 seconds. Um, so now that we can see that that's green, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to merge merge that branch um, to master. So yeah, there's a few ways we could do this. Um, we could just do it locally and um, merge to master and push that up. Uh, I think think what I'm going to do instead though, um, because I have, we haven't really done this yet as part of this work, is do it through a pull request. Um, so let's just check that out real quick. So you notice here, uh, I'm looking at the GoSu tutorial project and it's saying, hey, you've got this new branch that you pushed up uh, called Feature Add Continuous Integration. Um, there's different standards for naming branches, but a lot of times they'll start with feature dash and then whatever the feature is, or like bug dash, whatever the bug is that's getting fixed. Um, so anyway, uh, we can do a compare here. Um, and I can just leave a little comment here saying, um, I cleaned up the way the files are loaded so that they will run in <coughs> other environments. Uh, before we say that too, we might just mention that um, this feature adds continuous integration build support 
through code ship. Um, maybe even include a link. The builds can be seen here. Oh, actually, it looks like that's like a per account thing. Um, so I'm not going to be able to add that. But that's okay. So, uh, yeah, anyway, <clears throat> don't need to get too crazy with it, but just leave some notes. And uh, I can go ahead and just create a pull request out of that. You'll notice up here it's comparing the branch, um, this new feature branch with master. And if we look down here, we can see uh, what's changed between the two branches. And it'll you can, um, if the changes are small enough, and usually your changes should be relatively small, you can just compare what's new against um, what was there previously and see the additions and deletes, the diffs on all these. So anyway, it's uh, pretty straightforward. So I'm just going to go ahead and do a create pull request. OK. Um, saying all checks have passed. It, ideally, it'd be nice to add um, uh, a ch an integration check here with the code chip so that um, if for some reason the build fails that we are not able to merge it. Um, I'm gonna try and keep this video short, so if there's time for that, um, we'll do that, but uh, there may have to be a separate video. Um, so let's just go ahead and uh, merge that, I guess. Um, and I'm just wondering if, It'd be nice to get the the um, little badge in there for the build pass, uh, build passing or failing, but uh, we can do that after we do this one. So just checking again. I'm in um, my GoSu tutorial, merging in this feature branch uh, for adding continuous integration to master. So I'll just go ahead and do that. And um, after you merge, um, you can just uh, delete your branch. So I'll just go ahead and do that. If for some reason we needed to get it back, uh, GitHub makes it easy for us to do that. So I'll just do a delete. And we'll still have that locally. But if for some reason we needed it back, we could use this uh, restore branch feature here. Um, so now I'm curious uh, how we can add the code chip badge to our readme. All right, so it looks like we just, uh, so it says if you want to add a badge showing your last build status to your readme, you can find the code in the notification settings of your project. The raw URL for the image looks like this. Um, so let's try that out. So over here in our project, it says in the notifications tab, This is the project we want. So where are, are our notifications? Is it possible? Oh, project settings, notifications. Here we go. Okay, um, this is interesting. I wonder if it already is integrated with GitHub. It says we push the status of the build to the commit status API. Anyway, um, so where does it say we can get that from in there? You can find the code and the notifications settings of your project. Uh, here we go. So I think we want this. I 
And now uh, we should see new code in master. Yep, so when I did a, a, a pull, it's gonna grab everything that's uh, been updated in master, so we're, we're good there. And then we do not have a readme, so I'm gonna do a touch uh, readme dot md. Then we can open that up over here. It'd help if I could type. So we're just going to make something really simple for now. Um, and let's try that out. So I'll just go ahead and save that. And we can make a new branch for this. Um, so we could just do get checkout dash b with the branch name. So we can say add code ship badge. And there's a tool. So um, something like this is pretty simple. Oh, there's not going to be a diff because it's all new. Um, we could use, if we wanted to, to get like a visual look at what's changed. Um, take a look here and uh, I'm using the GitHub desktop app. I've been using it a little bit more recently. Um, one thing I like about it is it's really easy to do line by line commits. So like sometimes you might be working on something and you're making kind of two unrelated sets of changes. And if you if you come in and use like a line by line um, style of committing, um, then you can uh, split those out into separate commits in case you wanna um, need to isolate them later on for some reason, like just grab one of the commits or something. Um, I actually did that with the last set of commits about um, getting our spec working again. So uh, anyway, this is a pretty basic one. So I'm just gonna go ahead and say add badge, add CI badge. Oh no, this, yeah, to read me, to read me. So we'll go ahead and commit that. And we'll go ahead and push that up. Uh, I usually just run git push uh, with the version of git that I'm running. It actually will just spit out the exact um, command for creating the branch of the same name upstream. I just find it faster than trying to type it all out myself each time. So I'll just go ahead and push that. So that's gonna take our local branch, make an uh, upstream branch out of that, and then that'll show up in uh, GitHub. It'll also show up in uh, our CI, so we can take a look at that. So we can see this is running here. I'd actually like to try to catch it in GitHub to see what it's doing. So here it's... I'm just going to go ahead and uh, create a pull request out of that. And yeah, this is pretty cool. So I guess um, uh, CodeShip set up to be able to just automatically kind of integrate with GitHub. So we can see here that uh, that build passed. I was hoping we could get here before it happened, but um, it basically shouldn't allow us to merge unless this check passes. And uh, we looks like we can click here to get the exact uh, build details, which is pretty cool. And I'm going to go ahead and um, merge that. Oh, I need to go back. Huh? So I will merge that pull request. Confirm merge. Delete branch. And then hopefully we'll have a little badge over here. Yay. So, uh, yeah, I think code chip will run master again yeah so it's just double checking after we merged our code into master that um, master still builds successfully 
And that can be really useful if you're automatically deploying code that's merged into master. Um, so if your tests fail for some reason, um, you don't deploy code that doesn't work into production. So yeah, I think we're good. I'm going to check out master again. We should see this code come down as I do the pull because it's been merged into master. So there it is. And if we hop back over here and we reload this, we should see a code chip passing. So yeah, so now we have uh, continuous integration as our uh, builds uh, builds being, sorry, <laughs> we're running our specs basically every time um, we, we uh, push code to make sure everything's still working and we can see the status of that in our uh, project page here on GitHub. And then um, also on our pull request, um, the status of the builds being considered is a factor in whether or not we're actually allowed to merge the pull request into um, master, which is good. So that way we don't merge things that don't work. Um, so yeah, this is kind of a, a common common workflow on, um, especially on teams using Ruby or, or Rails um, and, <laughs> and uh, also in other languages. But um, just thought it'd be kind of nice to run through how this works and, and why you why you would do something like this and how to how to get that set up. Um, I think I'll probably do something similar um, for the next video with um, probably a really short video, but basically setting up um, something that'll automatically watch for changes in files locally in our development environment and just rerun um, the relevant tests every time those files change. So basically we can we can work either on our code or our specs, and every time we make a change, the relevant specs will automatically run just to give us really fast feedback loops, um, and we don't have to keep jumping out to either the terminal or a separate window in, uh, in our editor to, to check the specs. It just kind of helps speed things up. Um, it gives you really good, really good feedback really fast to let you know if you broke something. So um, yeah, I think that's it for this video. Um, if you're interested in learning more um, about the project. I have videos from the beginning. Um, uh, I still have uh, quite a bit of work and branches and uh, branches off of master at this point that haven't been integrated, but uh, I'll be doing videos here uh, in the coming <coughs> coming weeks to basically uh, move all that over in a uh, test driven way. I had to uh, spike on the project a little bit for a presentation I was doing, but I um, want to make sure all those changes are uh, test-driven. Um, and I don't just basically copy the code over from the spike. So anyway, uh, uh, there'll be more videos coming up soon, and that'll be kind of the fun stuff. It'll be um, doing variations of uh, items in the game and um, playing music and some, some things like that that'll be a little more interesting than kind of getting the core... Um, core system set up and going. So uh, I'm looking forward to those. Um, I like these uh, kind of uh, development uh, videos too, because I think it's nice to get a, if you're not familiar with this stuff, it's kind of nice to get a peek into um, kind of what the common practices are in the industry. And, and, and I think that's something that'll be nice to get out of these videos, um, is just to get a get more comfortable with um, you know what a typical workflow is when you're working in Ruby. If you have questions too about tools that I'm using or or services or just things that I kind of glossed over, please let me know. Um, all this stuff's uh, pretty familiar to me just because I use it all the time. But if uh, if you want to hear more in depth discussion on uh, anything that I've gone over, please just uh, leave a comment. Um, <laughs> you can check my uh, YouTube channel too for these previous videos and. Um, uh, yeah, feel free to you know drop a comment on there, like the video, and um, and uh, yeah, please leave comments to let me know what you want to know more about, and uh, look look for more uh, videos in the next uh, week or two. So uh, yeah, thanks for following along.